Hi, nice to see you and welcome back to another video. It is known that to get good wildlife and bird photography, you need to have good skills. That's a fact. But of course, it's not a secret that to reach these good pictures, the technology and a good camera gear will help you a lot. But how was it 40 or 50 years ago when all this technology was not here? How was it, for example, to take a photo of birds in flight without an autofocus? Can you imagine it? Well, stay with me and let's go back in time. Today, I will take you to a uh, right back in time. A time in where digital cameras, of course, doesn't exist. A time in there, if you believe it or not, how to focus was something nobody knew about. A time in where the highest shutter speed was 1000. A time in where the light plays a major role you can't imagine. A time in where patience and your skills to get good pictures was the key factor to success in wild photography. For this, we will use my lovely Canon FTQL. This is a camera built in the late 60s, uh, 1967 to be more precise. It's a 35 millimeters camera. It uses a film in this time, I will use a black and white film from ACFA. And his fastest shutter speed is 1000. And I can choose a highest ISO according to the film I'm using of only 800. The most difficult issue is that I can take only 36 pictures with this film today when you just go out in a few minutes, you take more than 100 pictures. Now we have to take care to just shoot when we are sure that the picture will be the best. As lens, I will use this Euro Optic 300 millimeters teleobjective. It is an objective that has a maximum aperture of 5.5, goes to 22 and it works really good. Of course, this camera has not an autofocus and it has an integrated light meter that works through the lens. One of the major issues is to get the right exposure. You have to fix aperture. Now in the ISO you can't move because it is a fixed ISO in the film you have and change, of course, the shutter speed. That is a thing you have to do in the moment you're shooting the picture. But sometimes, of course, when you try to take a picture of a flying bird, it's something impossible. So the best is to preset up the camera. Let's see. I'm sure that I will need a tripod or a static or a monopod because 250 of a seconds will be much too slow with this 300 millimeters telezoom, telephoto lens. So let's try with one over 500. I took already two pictures, 34 left. There is a wonderful blue heron in the other side of the shore. Of course, with the 300 millimeters, I can get, it's, it's too far away, but it is a chance that it gets to the other lagoon behind me and takes a flight just over us. So I have to be prepared. The sun is coming out. That is the best that could happen to me. There was some great ducks flying over there, so I was taking the pictures, but I don't know how it goes. <laughs> it has passed almost one and a half hour, and the blue heron still stays on the other side of the shore. 
That's an issue that you can change ISO. Today, with 20,000 ISO, or with this wide open lens, all this fast lens you have with f4, f2.8, would be a lot easier. There is just a dust over the pine there. Ooh, of course this camera is not weather sealed, so let's go under the tree. It's funny how the weather here in Germany changed in one moment to another. Just in one hour, we have the weather of the four seasons of the year. Now it's raining very heavy, but I'm hide here under this tree. The rain seems wants to stop. I think it will get worse. Look at So I prefer to cover the Nikon and the Canon is still here with me. It seems that the Iron will start his flight. Let's prepare. I can't believe it. Two swans just fly over me and landed there. Can you see it? They are still there on the other side of the shore. It has been almost five hours that I am here. The most frustrating thing is that to capture the action, I need to preset up the camera with the shutter speed, the aperture, and so get the right exposure. And of course, the focus distance and wait that something happened. And when then something occurs, and you don't have to set up the camera for this new event, oh, it's very frustrating. I'm getting wet. The swans are still at the other side of the shore. I have took already 31 pictures, only five photos left. It seems like it will stop to rain. I can't believe it. The sun is coming out. I was already preparing me to go and guess what? The swans seems to come here. I can't believe it, but they're coming here. One over 500, aperture 11. And well, that will be all for today. With these two wonderful swans behind me, we will say goodbye. If you find this video interesting, maybe you consider to subscribe and give it a like so others can see how it was to take bird and wildlife photography 40, 50 years ago with these old cameras. And well, have a nice week and see you next week. Bye bye.